Teletubby costumes, posters of President Leahy, a squirrel costume. They were all outside the TD Bank Sports Center as fans lined out of the arena waiting to see a Quinnipiac victory, and they got one tonight. A 4-1 victory, a hero's hat cup for the Quinnipiac Bobcats, a 25-2-7 and regular season, and a number one ranking in the country. It finishes 2015-2016. Welcome inside the rebound presented by Q30 Television and Q30 Sports. I'm Mari Hirsch-Gordon, joined alongside of Quinnipiac men's ice hockey beat reporter Victoria Rutigliano. And Victoria, it was a freshman class tonight that shined for the Bobcats. That it was. Chase Prisky, Thomas Aldworth, um, Scott Davidson, Luke Shiplow, they all registered points in tonight's game. Luke Shiplow with his second goal of the weekend. This is the freshman class that the Quinnipiac needed. Ren Pecknold preaches in post game that he has a first line and he has three other lines. And considering his first line didn't do much tonight, he really needed those three other lines to perform, and they did, especially the freshman class who had four points tonight total. So they were a big part of this game. Um, knowing that you have a freshman class that can perform like that really can give you a lot of confidence going into games. And with a freshman class like that, it, it does help them out on the ice. In a big rivalry game, though, freshmen sometimes can get carried away. Way. The emotion, the excitement, the thunder sticks were out, the band was great tonight, but the composure in the second and the third period really paid dividends for the Bobcats. That it did, but at the same time, you did see after a lot of plays, some scuffle. You saw a lot of players go to the um, bench for roughing. You saw one player on Yale get a five minute major for charging, so there was you could see that there was a lot of excitement going into this game. I mean, Quinnipiac came in knowing that it was one of their biggest rivalries of the year. Yale knows that Quinnipiac feels that way. So, and you could see it out on the ice, and it really made the game a lot more exciting. Did you feel like the freshmen weathered the storm pretty well and, and handled it well? They clearly did. I mean, two of them had goals, so they they were obviously comfortable. They were obviously composed out on the ice, and that helped them a lot. One of the more experienced members, though, Michael Gartig in net. Between the pipes, 26 saves for the senior. A real confidence boost going into the playoffs. Oh, yeah, definitely. He definitely needed this game. I mean, he hasn't had a shutout in a while now. And he was making saves on breakaways. He was flying in through the air, it seemed like, to make glove saves. Um, this is definitely something that he needed to boost his confidence because the next time they're going to be playing is in two weeks in the ECAC quarterfinals. So it was, a big, it was a big game for him. One thing that the Bobcats need to work on going into the playoffs. I know they have a weekend off, but what is Ram Pecknold going to harp on? Definitely their penalties. Or at least that's something that I like to harp on. I think that they get a lot of penalties and they got a lot of penalties in this game. But then again against Brown last night, they didn't get as many penalties. So it could have just been the rivalry going into this game. That's something they need to keep in check because getting late game penalties, especially in the playoffs, could hurt them. Tanner McMaster even said in the post-game press conference he got a little carried away, but then they calmed it down come the second and the third period, and that's really what proved dividends. Once again, a 4-1 victory for Quinnipiac. Victoria, thank you for joining me. No problem. For more information about Quinnipiac men's ice hockey and their number one ranking in the country, don't forget to check out our website at Q30Television.com and also on social media at Q30Television and at Q30Sports. Victoria has everything about men's ice hockey. You can find her out on Twitter at Vic underscore Rutigliano and myself at Mahersh, M-A-H-H-E-R-S-H. For Kyle Lavasser, Victoria Rutigliano, and Maury Hirsch-Gordon, we'll see you next time.